Pháp dương vô thượng tôn tam giới vô lực thấp Thiên nhân chi đạo sư tử sanh chi tự phù Ư ừ, nhất niềm quy năng diệt tam kỳ nghiệp Sướng dương nhược tán tháng ức kiếp mạc năng thần Nam mô Bồ sư Thích Ca Mâu Ni Phật. Continuing onward from the first lecture, the Tathagata viewed the Lanka castle from afar and thought since the past Buddhas had lectured at the Lanka castle, he himself should continue the tradition and help spread the Buddha Dhamma there as well. In short, This sutra described the Chí Tuệ Bát Nhã, or Prajna Wisdom. When one has achieved it, it will shine brightly on all evil thoughts in one's minds, so it can help eradicate all ignorance and deliver that mind into a blissful state. Ajidafa As you can see that there are already meaningful values in this initial section of the sutra, right? Clearly the value is that the Tathagata wanted to enter the Lanka castle symbolize the Prashna wisdom. This wisdom does not distinguish between good, evil, not good, and not evil. It goes directly into the pure mind of all beings and eradicates all remnants of evil or ignorance and nurtures a blissful mind state so one can be liberated. Therefore, you can see the meaning is so deep that if you just robotically chant it or gloss through the sutra, then you would have missed the meaning and saw only the visible forms. Now we read from the Sutra text. At that moment, King Ravana of the Raksasas, through the spiritual power of the Buddha from afar, knew that the Buddha had just left the palace of the Ocean Dragon King, accompanied by an innumerable host, including Sakra and Brahma. Looking at the turbulent ocean waves, the Buddha saw that alaya consciousness of all beings are not different. Like that, the winds of objectivity stir up in the consciousness of the minds. King Ravana joyfully said, I should request the Blessed One to enter the Lanka castle so that I, the gods, and human beings can be blessed in this long dark night. Once said, he and his attendant rode the floral chariot toward the Buddha, stepped down and walked around the Blessed One three times. They played musical instrument and sang to honor the Buddha. These musical instruments are full of precious stones and wrapped in priceless cloth. The songs and sound were beautifully played. In this sutra, you can clearly see the liberation principle of the Tathagata encompasses the great chiliocosm or the Buddha world. For example, Regarding the dragon or serpent beings who live in the water, they have strong sexual characteristics. For them to abandon their sexual urges to follow the way is extremely difficult. Whereas the yaksa, who are demons that live in the earth, air, or in the lower heavens, they have strong violent and anger tendencies. Similarly, for them to abandon their violent characteristic would also be very difficult. 
it is like you are asking a tiger not to eat meat and become a vegetarian. Then the tiger would only shake its head and not accept such impossible feat. The dragon being would react similarly to such a request of abandoning its sexual urges. But strangely though, the prasna wisdom can still be shined brightly on those beings. So no matter how violent or strong a desire can be, if you practice and can develop the prasna wisdoms, it can minimize and eventually eliminate those extreme tendencies. We have just analyzed the conceptual meaning of the sutra. Now we turn into its form. You can see clearly that the Tathagata's grand compassionate aura can rescue all beings in the great chiliocosm. It would not abandon any. So for any being who is fortunate enough to have karmic connection to the Buddhist philosophy, no matter if that person is good or bad, he or she will meet up with the right path on the way to liberation. Do you see that today you are very lucky to have the good blessing to hear this Mahayana Sutra? How many out there do you think have this good fortune? Therefore, there is a Buddhist saying, the Mahayana path is reserved only for those who have good karmic blessing with the Buddha. For those who are not destined to the liberating path, no matter what you say, it will not be received. For example, in the Vitanghu or the Abhutadhamma Paraya Sutras. The Buddha knew that the four carriage attendants of the queen were her religious teacher in the past life. But due to fame and fortune, they deceived her and now came back to be her carriage attendants. The Buddha, through his spiritual power, appear in front of all four attendants to give Dharma talk, but they cover their eye and ears and yell out loud. What did we do to deserve this misery? Please stop the Dharma talk. We cannot take it anymore. This is an example of evil people who had the good fortune to have met the Buddha, but had the ill fortune of not accepting the Buddha's teaching. In this time, the Buddha has entered Nirvana, but he has left behind his Dharma body, which are the Buddhist Sutras. These Sutras are still in this world, but the people who truly want to study them are few in between. As times go by, these sutras will eventually be lost and forgotten. It is almost 3,000 years since the Buddha was here. When 10,000 years have passed, these sutras will completely be forgotten. We feel sad when we hear of this prediction, but these sutras will not be destroyed. It will still be there but the wisdom of the people by that time will be limited. This is why even though the Mahayana Sutras will be available, it will be as if it did not exist. It will not be lectured and understood. Therefore, the Sutras will disappear. So, you can see that these Yasua demons are mean and violent. They are not afraid of anyone. If one of them was attacked, then a hundred of them will come to get their revenge and attack the perpetrator. 
That is another type of demon called Lhasa. They live near the ocean, whereas the Yasua live mainly in the mountain. Even this Lhasa demon is afraid of the Yasua. The Lhasa travel in a smaller group than the Yasua, so if there is trouble, the Yasua is much more difficult to deal with. They will fight against their enemy to the end, one way or another. So you can imagine how violent and evil these Yasua are. But once the Buddha's wisdom can shine upon these demons, then from Yasua king to its commoner, they all will listen and follow. Even the Yasua king himself and his attendants rode the chariot to welcome the Blessed One. You can see that once the Prajna wisdom has spawned, the most evil one can be transformed and pacified. It is really important that when you read the Mahayana Sutra, you must comprehend its deep meaning. Don't focus on the form. Anyone can see the visible forms. At that time, the Buddha was looking at the Lanka castle and looked inward and surveyed the consciousness of beings. He saw that consciousness was always in motion, similarly to how he saw the waves are in constant motion due to the turbulent winds. So if you expect a being to have a quiet mind, then it is like the ocean surface without winds. This is not an easy thing to do. You would have to have worn out 30 to 40 meditation cushion seats before you might be able to achieve this. Your thoughts are due to your karmic winds. This wind would be continuous. That cannot be eliminated in a few days. The Buddha saw and knew that the Eighth Consciousness, which is the Alaya Consciousness, of all being will always be full of thoughts and emotion. Therefore, you might see an individual be quiet on the outside, but inside he could be filled with past regrets, or wishes for the futures, or plans for the current. His body may be quiet, but his mind is not. It is incited by the myriad images of the past lives stored up in the Ilaya consciousness. So outwardly, serenity does not mean that stillness exists within. Hence, you should not be surprised by one who has fame and recognition in the past but now, after migrating to America, sitting still in his old age, what do you think would rise up in his mind? All kinds of glorious and fond memories of their past achievements would arise and he would be stuck in the past. He has nothing much to look forward to in the future, so he would hang on to his glorious past which is stored in his Eighth Consciousness. Now, if we take this consciousness and help guide it into a blissful state, renounce all the emotional addiction of the world, then this consciousness will transform itself into a place of great serenity for all beings. Why? Because once this mind is quieted, and not stuck on anything. Then the transformation of thoughts into wisdom and nirvana will occur. So do you want to still seek sensation of the outside world? No. The outside world belongs to the one who still is delusional. We talk about the outside world only to deceive them so that they would abandon it and liberate themselves. 
all the outside world were created by your mind. If you build and fashion your mind into a blissful environment, then Nirvana is there for you to enter. Don't look outside. Now we continue with the Sutra text. The Buddha is the treasure of truth, no selfhood detached from all impurities. Pray thou will guide us to the truth, manifested body transformed by good deeds, awakened mind in constant blissful state, wishing the blessed one who can be everywhere, enter Lanka castle and explain the deep Dharma meanings. Here the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the past had also came and lectured on the Dharmas. We the Yaksas, all with one heart deeply hope to be able to hear thy indispensable Dharma talk. Did you hear that moving request made by the Yasa King? A violent being can be transformed once he is awakened to the kind and merciful light. From this passage, you can see the Buddha's Dharma body is an invaluable Dharma treasure. Today, you all know that the Buddha has entered Nirvana, but his Dharma body through the sutras still exist in this world. For those who have karmic connection to the Buddhist way, they will be able to hear, read, and realize their blissful pure mind if there is progress to their development. There were monks in the past who have meditated for a long time, but were not able to pacify their mind. But once they have read the Diamond Sutra, they progress further. Then there were others who rely on the Vimalakirti Sutra instead. After hearing, all the world in the ten directions were created by the mind. If the mind is silenced, then all the world is silenced. Once they comprehend its meaning, then they are awakened. So do you see now how important the Mahayana Sutra are? Today some people pray to the east, to the west, and to everywhere and not realize that their minds are complete. They look outward for help. What a waste of lifetime when they practice for so long but did not achieve. The saints who have lived in this world also have a common body, which is made up of flesh and blood. They are also afflicted with the four pains of birth, aging, illness, and death. But the main difference between these holy men and the common beings is their mind. They have no ego or selfhood. They don't see their self-consciousness in their actions. So where does this self-consciousness come from? It does not come from the sixth consciousness, which is your intellect. It came from your seventh consciousness, magnetic. Therefore, when the sutras talk about the way to eliminate your ego, it is referring to the pacification of your seventh consciousness. A lot of people did not understand. They thought by eliminating your thoughts, which is your sixth consciousness, you would be awakened. This is what the outsiders have thought and try to achieve it by forcing their thoughts to stay quiet. This would basically eliminate their wisdom and when they die, they would end up in a world of no thoughts. Vô tưởng thiên Hence, you see it is very important to practice with the right teacher. 
else you might have thought that you have practiced correctly, but have done it wrong all that time. In this world of voting ten or no thought, you might stay there for about 500 years, but eventually have to reincarnate back to this world because your thoughts would have movement again after 500 years of silence. Once it moves, then it will begin to be attracted to the outside world and then be trapped in the three realms again. The saints have no ego, so they are beyond the temptation of the world and beyond the attraction of the eight winds or bat found. These eight winds are gain, loss, defamation, eulogy, praise, ridicule, sorrow, and joy, which fans the passions of beings. So if someone in the audience said, Oh, like Sư Pháp Văn lecture badly today, then if he still has an ego, then he would be hurt and would not be able to sleep well and wonder what is the reason why that person ridiculed me. Whereas with someone who has no ego, he would lecture the sutras carefully and respectfully without worrying about what others think because the ridicule is based on that person's perception and that is his business. The ridicule belongs to the outside world. It has nothing to do with the Dharma teacher who mercifully did his job for the benefits of all beings. You all should learn this attitude so you can eliminate the trouble from your mind whenever the eight winds pass by. Some people said, I have practiced for a long time, for 30, 40 years already, and then suddenly gave me a poem to read, which I then read but downplay its worthiness, which made him angry, and his face turned red and felt disrespected. This obviously showed that he still has an ego, even though he said he has practiced for a long time, but was not able to eliminate it. The saint does not react this way. He has control over his seventh consciousness already. So whether you praise or ridicule him, it doesn't matter because that is your business, not his. A person who has eliminated his ego will not be troubled even if you curse at his ancestor. He knew that you are living under delusional thoughts and are ignorant. Therefore, a practitioner must achieve a state of no ego so that he would not be affected by the eight winds potentially causing his downfall. Don't care how long you have been practicing. Just need to blow the eight winds at you and I will know how well you have practiced. The eight winds or back phone is the ruler to measure how good or bad you have been practicing. It can determine how little or much your ego is still with you. There are people who have made a few offerings or helped the monastery with several projects and he was full of self-importance already. He would think that without him no one else could do the job and that he was number one in the group. But in the end, what would happen? He would cause his own downfall when the eight winds are blown at him. He would fall quickly. The bigger his ego was, the faster he would fall. The longer you have practiced correctly, the smaller your ego should be. If someone ridiculed, praised, gave or took away your benefits, 
and you can sleep soundly, then you know that your practices have been effective. This is the difference between a saint and a common person. Whatever you do to a saint, he or she will always be centered and at peace. Once you have truly eliminated the seventh consciousness, Magnata, then there is really nothing to be considered as troublesome. To have, loss, praise, or ridicule, these belong to the commoner, not the saint. A saint will always be centered and on top of the eight winds. This is a lecture in which I am directly pointing out the egoless state of all beings. So whoever is troubled, you should lean on this guidance to improve yourself. All the ignorant thoughts can be converted to wisdom by a saint. There are people who do not understand and ask, if you have no ego and you don't think, then how can you have a conversation? It is like a piece of wood or a rock with no senses. That thinking is wrong. Once your ignorant thoughts are eliminated, then wisdom is born. If you practice and you turn into a piece of wood or rock, then who did lecture on the 12 volume of Mahayana Sutra? Wasn't it the Tathagata? These 12 volumes of Sutra were not easily understood by humans or God unless great effort in practice was made. This is the Tathagata's wisdom, which came from the correct practice and experiences of oneself. Therefore, in my lifetime, I met people who did not understand and make claims that Buddhist practice made one dull like a rock. I know that they are completely wrong. These people may have been associated with a Buddhist monastery, but they are actually outsiders. Once your thoughts have been transformed into wisdom, then you will experience peace and tranquility. The opposite would be that most people have constant stress thinking about the past, the present, and worrying about the future. It is a non-stop, continuous process of misery. So, today you have learned that once the mind stops ignorant thinking, then wisdom slowly rises. In the Lotus Sutra, there was mention of a king who was in deep meditation for tens of thousands of years, but his wisdom did not develop, so he stayed put. It is true that once you eliminate your thoughts, you will be in a blissful state and after a while, slowly your wisdom and compassion will develop. It will force you to stand up with a desire to help all beings through the wisdom that you have developed. Not many people know about this fact. Besides gaining wisdom after eliminating your thoughts, you will also develop a bright aura around you, which can only be seen by others of similar achievement. There are also people who achieve but do not want to lecture the Dharma to help others. They are called Bichifat or Prateka Buddha or Solitary Enlightened One. The Buddha predicted that after 3,000 years, after his entrance to Nirvana, there will be many bichifat in this world. The reason is that they do not have any interest in this world and just want to practice by themselves and slowly eliminate this ego and be awakened. 
But the problem with them is that although they eliminated their seventh consciousness, but were not able to eliminate the eighth consciousness, alayatat, then their wisdom would not grow. Ayidafat. That is how it is. Wisdom can only be attained after the eighth consciousness is eliminated. Without it, Bichifat does not have the wisdom to lecture the Dharma correctly. But one thing that they could attain with the elimination of the seventh consciousness is spiritual powers. Ayidafat. This power can be manifested through the thoughts of these Bichifat. In today's world, you might have heard that some people have magical powers, but I can assure you that it is just illusions and trickery. These Bichifa can use their power to help, but they could not help being true Dharma lectures because their wisdom has not developed yet. So there are two types of usage of powers to help all beings. One is Thuyết Giáo Thông, which is helping through spiritual power. And the other is Chí Tuệ Thông, which is helping through Dharma lectures. The second method can help a lot more beings than the first. Today, I have lectured clearly about these two types of power of a holy man. Now we talk about those who has eliminated their ego as well as fatja, which is their attachment and discrimination. This fatja resides in the storage or alaya consciousness. And if it can be eliminated, then their wisdom is complete. At this stage, besides being able to lecture on the Dharma, they also have Thap Lập Chí Kiến, which is the ability to see the past, present, and future of each being. They know where you come from, and if you practice which world, you will end up once you die. Do you see that? Once a practitioner reaches that level, he will have the abilities and skillful means to help awaken all beings. Whereas those teachers who have not achieved, they could only guess and make wrong conclusions. Ayidafa. On the path of improving yourself, don't guess. You must know it clearly. So regarding no ego, it is created by the wisdom of the Buddhist Dharma. For this reason, King Ravana requested the Buddha to expound the Dharma meaning. You see, during Buddha's time, no one could lecture on the egoless Dharma, so the king was eager to learn from the Buddha so he could practice and transform to his better self. Although he was a demon king, he still had so much respect for the Dharma and wanted to change. Yet, you are humans who are almost complete and closer to the Buddha, but fail to the grasp the opportunity and wasted time and eventually will be part of the reincarnation cycle again. What a waste. For someone who does not practice, he will only have one body created by his parent. But for the Arhats, they will have their reincarnated body, Umtan, and their reward body, Baotan, which come from their needs or labors. They do not have a Dharma body, Fatan, yet. 
when a practitioner has reached the eighth level of bodhisattva, then he will have all three complete bodies. Bodhisattvas at beginning level, s a d i y a b o t a also only have two bodies. When he reaches the seventh level of a bodhisattva, then he will have three bodies: reincarnated, reward, and dharma's bodies. When the bodhisattva uses his untan. And b a o t a n to go out lecturing dhammas, where b a o t a n or reward body stand for wisdom. What do you think happens when he reaches the end of his life? Most being will have their karma force rush toward them. You did this or that, then you would have to go to this world or that. But a bodhisattva who spent his life lecturing dharmas to the public would not go where most people go, but instead be one with his dharma body, f a t t a n This place is where the devil king or guards cannot enter. This is where bodhisattvas, little nirvana, exist. This is the result of a person who has achieved. For example, c h a n h u e n j a n g a famous ancient Buddhist monk, who traveled for 14 years and brought back to China many sutras from India, spent all his life either lecturing or translating the sutras from Sanskrit to Chinese. Suddenly, one day, put away his pen and said, "His end had come," and then spent. The next seven days in deep meditation, and completed his merits. All his life, he spent gathering, translating, and lecturing the sutras for the benefits of all beings. Once he left, for sure he entered his dharma body and blissful world. Now look at yourself. What have you done to help all beings? In the Sura Gama Sutra, the Buddha mentioned two types of arhat. The first is d o n g a n a l a h a n or an arhat who only want to be in his blissful mind. When these arhats reincarnate back to the common world, then they are susceptible to their own common forces. Because at all times, no one can say he is naturally perfect. He has to start from evil, transforming to goodness, and then become an arhat. This is why an arhat has its own past karma and does not want to come back to this world to face it. In Buddha's time, there were many of these arhats. There are arhats who attracted many donations, and there are others who went for days for little or no food offerings. There is also a famous Zen patriarch who also had to pay with the severing of his head when he came back to this world. These arhats rather be in the little nirvana than come back. To face the karmic retribution, these are small-minded arhats. The second arhat type is called hoi tam alahan. They know that the little nirvana that they are in is small and not complete. It is a temporary location that they chose to settle in. Once their physical body has expired, this is why they change their mind to go on a wider path to become a bodhisattva. They are willing to reincarnate back to the world, improve themselves, and guide other beings toward a better state of mind. If this is successful, 
then they would have transformed themselves into the seventh level bodhisattva and continue on higher depending on how well they have practiced. The improvement could be instantaneous or take a very long time. At our heart level, they have attained no ego or bonga status. Once they reach the eighth level bodhisattva, then they are not stuck on forms and condition anymore. Now you see that between commoners and saints, they are similar in forms, but their minds are clearly different. There were worshippers who came to the temple and said, practitioner and non-practitioner both die. That is true, both die, but one will go wherever his karmic force take him, while the other will be in a blissful world that he has built for himself. A big difference. Delusional people will not understand. So once the Hoi Tam Alahan or repentful Arhat come back and eliminate all biases, then he will have three bodies, reincarnated, reward, and Dharma body. King Ravana praised the Buddha for having Bin Hoa Tự Tai, meaning he can appear anywhere, anytime, and in multiple places. Ayida Phat. The holy saints and gods also can do that. So why did the king specifically praise the Buddha about his power? You have to remember that those who have not achieved Nhất Thiết Chí, Như Lai, or Buddha Wisdom, they still have remnant thoughts and are not completely free. Because of this, once a thought is born, the evil gods will be aware of it. So wherever they hide, their remnants thoughts will give away their location because the evil god can sense it. Whereas if the Buddha wants to disappear, then he would enter his Dharma body. Then no evil god or anyone else could find him. You all should try harder to practice so one day, when your body expires, you can enter the blissfulness of your pure mind and no hellish god can find and take you away. Ayidafa. This level is very high. If you practice correctly, you will realize it. Regarding Buddha wisdom, only the Buddhas can understand. The Bodhisattvas and voice hearers are not able to understand it. A person who has attained the Dharma body versus one who did not are very far apart. In the past, this Lanka castle already had practitioners of the way living there. This is why the Arhats, Bodhisattvas, and Buddhas of the Ten Direction often came to help out. So, for those who have a sincere wish to follow the path, don't think that there won't be anyone around to help you. Be more concerned with whether or not you are committed enough to follow through. If you are, then a Bodhisattva will come to guide you. For those who are not sincere, then a rescuer will not show up. It all depends on your sincere mind if it has enough strength to draw the merciful aura of a Bodhisattva or Arhat toward you. This castle also had gone through many evolutions already, in that the saints and holy beings do not live here anymore, and is now occupied by the Yaksas. Do you know that we can go to this Lanka castle? 
if you have spiritual power, like the first patriarch, Kayit or Kasyapa, who has in his possession the original arms bowl and the robe of the Buddha, Sakyamuni, is waiting for Yilak or Maitreya Buddha to be born in this world to be the next Buddha so he can pass on the original Buddha's belonging to him. Currently, Kasyapa Patriarch lives inside a mountain cave with many types of demon guards who protect his body until the next Buddha comes back into this world. This cave is deep within the mountain and is part of the demon world so that the atmosphere here does not destroy Kasyapa body. When the next Buddha comes, these demons will alert Kasyapa, who would then come out and pass on the original Buddha's robe and arms bowl to Maitreya Buddha. Once done, he will use his spiritual power to enter emptiness and his earthly body would turn into dust. The reason is that once he come out into this world's atmosphere, his body reacts to it and naturally decay like all of us. This is something that few people know. Now back to the Sutra text. King Ravana continued to sing the Buddha praise with the following words. For seven days, the Blessed One, stay in the Makara Ocean, then left the Dragon Palace, arrive on this shore. The Makara Ocean is huge. There is a fish there named Makeda that was so huge that it could swallow a whole boat when it came up to the surface once every 100 years. A yaksa has violent temperament as well as big ego. Those of you who think big of yourself and are above others have the character similar to a yaksa. The yaksa like to be involved in physical activities like fighting and killing. They don't like to make poetry or be involved in festive songs. But when confronted with the prasna wisdom of the Buddha, this character would have to shrivel and give way. You see, here the king of the Yaksas made poetry and sung to praise the Buddha, which went against all of his character tendencies. So, who is this king? He was actually a bodhisattva, reincarnated back into the Yaksa world to have a chance to be close to Guy and to help these beings. You see, bodhisattva do not only help the human species alone, but they guide and help beings in the demon, animal, and the lower heaven worlds as well. The effort of bodhisattvas are great because they will go everywhere in the great chiliocosm to help whoever is in need. Through their karmic forces, most beings can be forced into the hellish or hungry ghost world, but the bodhisattvas do not. Humans can be reincarnated as an animal or small insects like ants or bugs, but bodhisattvas do not. The smallest type they could transform into is rabbits. Because insects and bugs do not have the ability to provide guidance to their species which a bodhisattva needs.
Do you know why the Buddhas went to the Dragon King Palace to lecture for seven days, but did not go there for three, four, five, or six days? Because the number seven symbolizes someone who is beyond the three realms. You see that there are six worlds that most will reincarnate to: one, hellless; two, hungry ghosts; three, animal; four, humans; five, atula; six, lower heavens world. Seventh is beyond this six, and it represents someone who is not bound to be reincarnated back. Number seven represents liberation for someone who has complete wisdom and skillful means to help all beings. You can see that there are many sutras in this world, but when compared to the sutras stored in the Dragon Palace, it is small. The evidence is that the 14th Zen Patriarch Long Tho, or Naga Juna. Have to go to the Dragon Palace to study the Mahayana Sutras. Even part of the Tantrism teaching was knowledge gathered from the Dragon Palace. Many of the secret Sutra teachings were brought into the palace by Dragon people. The question is, why these Dragon beings, who had strong sexual urges, would be interested? In the Buddhist sutras, the reality is that it is very difficult for them to abandon their tendency and follow the path. So instead, their goal is to collect the sutras, to read, chant, and bow and pay respect, so that they could get blessings. So, do you think these dragon beings are smart or not? I think they are. Humans do not appreciate the sutras and throw it away, but these dragons take and store it in their palace. Similarly, if a holy monk is born into this world, but you did not value him, so when he dies, his salai or sariya relics disappears with him. But these dragons search and collect these sariya relics, and pay respect to get blessings. So when talking about these dragon beings, you can see their sincerity and feel sorry for them, since they could not practice and follow the liberation path. These beings live in a damp and moist environment. Which are a reflection of their strong sexual energy. The dragons are limited in their ability, but have great respect for the sutras. In contrast, humans have all the potential skills, but ignore and take the sutras for granted. What a waste! Continuing with the text, King Ravana said, "I." And many of female yaksa, along with distinguished guests, and also many learned beings, use our power. Come here to greet thee, Ayidafa. You can hear how sincere and respectful King Ravana was, as he requested an audience with the Buddha. He gathered all his queens. And invited distinguished guests and learned beings to come greet and hear Buddha's Dharma talk. So you can see these days that the Buddha Dharma body still exists, but not many people read, study, and practice. Even worse, the number of people who can correctly preach the Mahayana Sutra are just a few. Probably less than the number of fingers on your hand. If you are looking for someone who can lecture about the form and the ways of the world, then there are a lot. 
but to have someone who can lecture on the Mahayana Sutras or the pure mind of the Bodhisattvas or Buddhas, then there are very few. I heard online of a Zen monk who lectured on how to communicate with the young people who are in their twenties. This has nothing to do with the pure mind or practitioner. It has nothing to do with Zen path. What a shame. The Buddha has predicted this already. You will see or hear about great number of people who practice, but there are not many who are awakened and liberated from their reincarnation cycle. Why is that? People during Buddha's time practiced, and people at this modern time also practiced. So why were a lot of people back then successful, while the practitioner today are not? It is because the sutras are the map and the key to liberation, but only a few can expound on it. The practitioners today pray to the East or the West, their minds are full of thoughts, they have biases and ignorant thoughts, but they want to reincarnate into the Buddha's blissful world. This is unreasonable because where you end up depends on your mind. A quiet mind will result in a quiet world. But if your mind is delusional, then your prayers are also delusional. You should all turn inward so your mind can be at peace and free from the contamination of the outside world. Only then can you be in the Buddha's world after you die. If not, then it is like you are searching for hair on a turtle or horn on a rabbit, which do not exist. I will end the second lecture here. Time flies by so fast, which is why you all should try your best to establish a body mind and practice else just wasting time, wishing and wanting liberation that will never happen. If you want to end the reincarnation cycle, then your mind must be settled. There is no way around this. This sutra is very long. I hope that I can fulfill my wish to complete it before I go, so people can have the chance to study this sutra and practice successfully. I saw all the people suffering and felt bad for them. I know where I will be going once I die, but seeing all the people in an endless cycle of reincarnation is such a sad sight to see. Have you ever heard of Ananda, the personal assistant to the Buddha for 25 years? He thought that, since the Buddha was his cousin and also his direct teacher, for sure the Buddha would save him as well when he entered Nirvana. But Ananda was wrong. When the Buddha entered Nirvana, he became one with his Dharma body. How can he bring Ananda along, right? In the end, Ananda was by himself. But fortunately for him, Ananda had been practicing for many lifetimes already and was able to attain Arhat level after three months. So, don't take it for granted. Even if you live or work together with a patriarch, you still would have to try your best to practice. Else, you would never enter Nirvana that is within you. Namo Bonsu Titka Moni Phật